all very well being a world plastic athlete, but can Dean Macy caught with the challenge of the riverbank? They fight right to the end. Get in there, look at that. Get on course with Dean Macy. You deserve a medal. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Fridays at 10 on Discovery Real Time. Welcome to One Course, my name's Dean Macy and today we're in deepest, darkest Dorset where we're going to be fishing possibly the most famous stretch of river in the country, the royalty section of the Avon. Obviously we're going to be fishing for barbel and my guide is Mr Barbel himself, Ray Walton. Now Ray's got some weird and wonderful ways of catching these fish, let's just hope that they decide to play ball. Nice to meet you, mate. Hello, Dean. How you been doing? Well, not bad, not bad. Looks like you've been out on the bank. Got some of your kit with you? Got all of it with me, mate. All of it? Yeah. I've got all my little bags, got my light rod, got my landing net. Don't carry anything else. No chair? No, no chair. Bivy, no bivvy? No buzzers? No like carp anglers. Really? No. All I take is what I've got on me, and I'm not going to fall the kit like you do. <laughs> so, you're going to work today. Well, I'll tell you what, that's totally different to how I normally fish a bowl, so... You better take a look in here, mate, and sort through some of mine, because I think I might not be geared up properly. Crikey. Typical carp anglers gear. <laughs> you don't need the brolly, you don't need the seat, because you're not going to sit down and make a cup of tea or anything else. The bag's too heavy, you need a travel light, and the rods, well, you might as well have bought your javelin, but that <laughs> one looks fine. The pound and the quarter. Well, usually when I'm barbell fishing, I use my pound and three quarter or my quiver tip rod if I'm fishing a maggot feeder or a feeder or something like that. Not going to do any of that today? No, we're not going to do feeder fishing. We're going to rove around. Pound and a quarter would be absolutely perfect, right? The one and three quarter pound, bit heavy to hold all day long. OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put a ten pound main line on my reel and stick that on this rod. That'd be fine. And exactly. I reckon we're off ready to go, do you reckon? I reckon that's brilliant. Good lad. Right, so let's get it on. Cool. I'm a big fan of the barbel, but I've not got that much experience. My personal best is around nine pounds, so anything of that order will have me turning cartwheels on the riverbank. Barbel are usually golden brown, which fades to white on their belly. It gets its name from four fleshy barbels hanging from its mouth. It's a long, slim fish, usually between 15 and 30 inches in length, and it can grow up to a whopping great 20 pounds. Not only are they stunning to look at, but they love a good fight. Fishing the Royal Weir is a real pleasure because there's a huge choice of quality swims. Up by the weir you often get lucky. The water is fast moving as it runs down towards the pipes, a famous landmark. Further down there's the railway bridge and trains thunder over that all the time. It doesn't seem to spook the fish though. A 23 pound salmon came out beside the boathouse yesterday and the bridge near the car park is another big favourite of Ray's. There's a lot of ground to cover, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We'll be on the move all day. Well, this is the Royalty Fishery on the Hampshire Avon. It's absolutely stunning, everything I pictured it to be. But I've never fished here before, so why have you brought me to these swims? Well, Dean, the, these have a history of being very, very productive early season, and generally all through the season. Um, from the pipes right the way down to the railway pool, green banks in between, produce all different sizes of fish. Generally three to six pound, three to eight pound in the middle bit, bigger fish at the pipes and bigger fish at the railway. So we've got a good chance. What are the features we're looking for? But generally we're looking for the channels in the weed. Right. Um, they're great places for barbel to hide up in and move through. Um, you'll see where the boils are, they're underwater features, what you can't see. We're gonna work this stretch from the pipes down to the railway and cover as much area as possible, trying to bump into the fish. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, it looks stunning. The river is in perfect nick. I just hope we're good enough to get some fish. I think we will. Well, 
Well, I hold my hands up. I'm a little bit of a static fisherman, but Ray here loves walking up and down the bank, and he's got a roving and rolling technique, which is absolutely perfected. Tell me about it, mate. Right, what we're going to do today, we're not going to sit down. We're going to get you up and running about, like you normally do. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is try to present the bait in the most natural way that a barbel would expect to see it in the moving river, right. i.e. flowing down on the riverbed and you're putting it on the barbel doorstep. Okay. All right? Well, like I said, it's my first time, mate, so talk me through it. Where have I got to put this? Well, I suggest you put that two-thirds of the way across. So we're fishing up, well upstream? Upstream, 11 o'clock, okay. towards the pipes, and then let it come back towards us, all right, until um, we get to about 12 o'clock. Yes. And then start walking with it. Okay, mate. Right? Right, well, wish me luck. You don't need luck, Dean. There you go. That was lucky. That's for a perfect. start. <laughs> right, now tighten up your line, but leave a small element of slack in it so that if a fish detects it and uh, puts his mouth over it, it won't throw any resistance from the rock tip. So always keep a slight bow in the line, okay? okay. There we go, you're doing well. It's just got caught up in the weed. That okay. was a good run through. The first 15 yards... That's going through, give, okay. Just give it a touch. Yeah, just flick it a little bit, because it looks like it's caught on the weed. There you go, you got it on the move yeah. again. Oh, that's running through two nice pieces of stream weed. That looks superb. That's a good run through right now. Yeah, that's good. Just at about... Give it a little yard. bit of line now. Give it a little bit more slack so it pulls across to that far bank. It's a great feeling when you get it running through on the gravel. Yeah. That's what you should feel. Any unusual bumps or little knocks, then you've got to strike at them because that's the barbel. It's trying to suss you out. I mean, these are like jelly. They really are, just in the anticipation of the bite. But I feel that on a few occasions on this particular cast, I've presented the bait quite well. Yeah. Maybe the barb will think a little bit different, but... After years of static fishing, this is like going back to school for me. But with Ray on my shoulder, I feel like I've got the best teacher I could have. I've had a chuck, and now it's Ray's turn to cast. Straight away I can see how cleanly he runs the bait through the swim. He's been fishing here for about 15 years so he knows all the underwater features. He's working the channels between the weed and sure enough, on his first cast, he's into a fish. There you go Dean. Good lad. Is it a barbel? I think so. Doesn't feel very big though. Let's get down here and you can put it over the top while I'm netting for you. Okay, I'll come down and t put him to the net. I'll bring him above and then drop him back into your landing. Net. Lovely okay. jubbly. When you put him in the net, just let him rest up a bit. There he comes. All right, just leave him in the net, let him recover. That's fine. Good well, job. there you go, mate. Not the biggest barbel. No. But it's a barbel. It's a star. Potluck. What should we do with this, mate? Where do you want? Do you want um, to get the unhook mate, and stuff? I'll get everything ready. Oh, you've got it all on you. Yeah. I'll hold your rod for you, mate. Right. Set up up here. Still plenty of fighting. Yeah, he'll fight another day. First barbel. Beautiful. On the rolling and roving method. There you go. Should we return him? I think so, mate. It's bigger fish in the sea. Oh, sorry, bigger fish in the haven. Yeah. Ray's not one for staying put, and we can't see any fish in the swim, so we're moving on. The weather is very in and out. Patches of drizzle, and then bright sunshine. It's a fisherman's nightmare but it doesn't seem to bother Ray. He uses the same techniques whatever the conditions and he's super confident. Even if the rig does look simple to anyone brought up on bite alarms and other fishing gadgets. So Ray, we've done plenty of roving mate and plenty of rolling, but tell me about this rig. I mean, it seems so simple, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, it's um, very simple, very, very effective though. And all it is is braid, a heavy braid direct right through to the hook. Okay. Nothing in between with a small piece of plasticine on the end is a weight. Right, so you don't need no shot or anything like that? No, no, really, um, with shot or any fixed lead to your line, your main line, um, it will always be the cause of a snagging up or a fish pulling you into a snag. With the plasticine, it, it will still get caught up the same, but when you pull for a break, then the plasticine just pulls off. Okay. Simple as that. What about the hook? I mean, that's a real chunky looking hook. What I've done is actually weight the hook. That is because you need to keep the bait right down onto the bottom for the barbel. And with the plasticine is not as dense as lead, then the hook actually compensates for
for him. Like, okay, and what do you use for bait? Because obviously you're not going to get any maggots or castor on there. Yeah, well, basically, 99% of the time I'm always using luncheon meat. Just plain old luncheon meat? Plain old luncheon meat, pink stuff, don't colour it, don't dye it, or anything like that. And all I do is then bury the hook into the meat, and that really is your basic rig. So that rig has caught you hundreds of arbol? It's actually caught me thousands of arbol, and also very, very big ones as well. Well, I ain't greedy, mate. One or two on something like that would do me. I feel like I've already run a marathon, but we're on the move again. It takes its toll on the eyes, this kind of fishing, because you're watching the surface every second. A pair of polarising sunglasses are essential to help spot the fish. Now we're down by the footbridge opposite the car park. Ray's watching me roll through and I'm finding the clear water a real advantage in perfecting my technique. So this roving and rolling method, mate, I mean, it's, you've got it right down to a fine art form. How did you start? Well, originally it came by accident uh, when I was feeder fishing in the trammels. Um, unwittingly, I, I didn't put enough weight on the feeder. And um, as I cast, the feeder didn't stay static. It actually moved along the bottom. And I kept feeling these little taps on the rod before I put it in the rod rest. Um, it happened quite a few times until instinct told me to strike one of them. And believe it or not, it was a barbel. Really? And um, fascinatingly, in that weekend I was fishing, I caught 46 bar. Really? In a weekend? Yeah, in a weekend. And uh, the moving bait was, was, for me, was I'd never looked back since. Well, I have to say it's fantastic. But, I mean, you did say that it's a quite an instant method. It is. Um, ba basically, when you're using this roving method, um, you're trying all the swims. And really, if the fish are up for it, you'll get the fish on the first or second chuck. Really? And that works probably about 80-90% of the time. Yeah. If you don't get any indications that a fish is there, then we move off and return later. Cool, right, I reckon we should do just that. Cool. Right, that's off. Raise a right ball of energy, but around lunchtime the sun's well overhead and the barbell are hiding in the weed. The fishing isn't good, so I finally get him to sit down for a chat. It's a rare chance to ask him about a fish he caught recently, which any barbell fan will know about. It's the royalty's biggest. I noticed you've got a photo of your personal best on the royalty there. Can I have a look at it, mate? Yeah, sure. That's a colossal fish. How much did it weigh? That's 13.10 when I had that one. And is, it that, is that the record fish for the royalty? It's actually grown £3 into the record fish at 16.1 now. But did you catch this one on the rolling method? Caught that on the rolling method. First cast, last cast of the day. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit lacking, isn't it? Well, I normally have about 30 last casts, but it does go to show that uh, there is still work for me yet. And, uh, Ray's had that one fish and I've had a few knocks. It's really intense fishing, you've got to be concentrating all the time. I can't wait to get back to it, but join me again in part two.